Trevor Sims, the Bleacher Report NFL analyst, former NFL quarterback, and, of course, co-host with Mike Florio with Pro Football Talk Live. Joining us, uh, this program brought to you by the 2018 Mercedes-AMG E-Class with a suite of innovative technologies. It's one of the most intelligent cars on the road. Go to MBUSA.com or visit your local dealership. Schedule your test drive today. Chris, good morning. Thanks for joining us. We'll get to the NFL in a moment. Um, what do you make of what's happening with Maryland bringing back DJ Durkin? Uh <laughs> You know, it's a it's a weird situation altogether. I I can't say Dan that I've followed it all that closely. Uh, I think that listen, it, it's an unfortunate situation where you would think there would be better protocol and things like that in place. But uh, to me, you know, again, I'm not going to sit there and say that you know Coach Durkin should have never been able to coach again in the NFL, you know, or coach in college football ever again. But I will say this, that, you know, the whole college, like, you got to work until you puke and all that old school thinking, it, it's got to go. It's stupid. And there needs that's why there needs to be almost like the NFL where you have, like, that third-party doctor on the sideline. There needs to be somebody like that around college football programs uh, during off-season training and things like that. Uh, because I've seen that kind of stuff at Texas. Not that anybody came close to death, but, you know, it's, oh, you know, you're not tough unless you're throwing up or, you know, yeah. you're going and pushing yourself till you can't go anymore. It's a stupid way to train, first of all. Science has already proven that. Why do you train guys to work like that when the sport's about four-second explosions? It's just outdated and stupid from that standpoint, Dan. I guess that's my take more than anything. And you practice in the heat, and I mentioned the strength and conditioning coach might be the second most most important person on a football staff but yes. aside from the head coach and the head coach and, is the and, one who brings oh, him in right yes exactly right uh, that's that's the head coaches you're, you're right I mean I think he's the second most important guy uh, and just about any college football program and yes he's usually a guy that is extremely well trusted by the head coach uh, and, you know, also I'd say to that, too, about the outdated training methods, you know, it just w w why is an offensive lineman running and doing all that like wide receivers and running backs? Like, you know, hey, a rhino doesn't have the same skill set as a cheetah. So why would we expect it to be able to do the same things? I, th I think that's the thing that drives me crazy, even thinking about back to my day or even now when I see high school practices or anything like that. I just go, it just makes no sense that an offensive lineman is expected to run and have the same endurance and all of that of a wide receiver who's, you know, six foot, 180 pounds and has like 7% body fat. A couple of NFL things here with the trade deadline. I know we love to do winners and losers here. Um, and, and a lot of times we do winners and losers with draft picks, but I always say I got to wait three years to find out or four years if I won or lost with a draft pick. With a trade deadline, Golden Tate's going to play right away, Dante Fowler right away, Demarius Thomas right away. So let's assess it in real time. Who, uh, who was the big winner yesterday? I look at the Eagles as the big winner. I think the Golden Tate move was phenomenal by Philadelphia. And I know that Philadelphia, oh, we wanted Deshaun Jackson and all that, or they needed a speed guy. First of all, Golden Tate has a lot of speed still. He still is explosive, has incredible acceleration. You know, he's the type of player, Dan, that you're seeing more and more at the wide receiver position in the NFL, which I call wide receivers that are in running back bodies, right? And he... Uh, I look at the Eagles this year. I don't think they're going to get back to what they were last year in the run game. Last year, they were one of the best run teams in football. This year, they're somewhere around 20th in football running. Jason Peters being in and out of the lineup. They're always having to make, you know, Lane Johnson being hurt. I think they're going to have to depend on Carson Wentz and his right arm more this year than last year. And Golden Tate can do all those little Tyreek Hill things that you see Andy Reid do in Kansas City, he can do the speed sweeps. You could toss sweep them like you saw Cordaro Patterson uh, with the, the New England Patriots last week. But I do think he brings great value. And I think, you know, with Nelson Aguilar and, of course, Alshon Jeffrey, who's the big target on the outside, but Aguilar and Tate will be a great combination. Yeah, they're similar players in theory, but I think Tate is more dangerous in space or making plays happen with the ball in his hand after the catch. That, that's the one I'm most excited about. Also, because I look at the Eagles, too, as, you know, I don't think they played their best football yet this year, and I think they're a team that's still – a Super Bowl contender in my eyes. And if they get in the playoffs, I'd say watch out in the NFC. If I gave you the Rams or the field in the NFC? Yeah. Who are you taking? Ooh. 
I would probably take the field, but that would be really tough. I mean, it's a close one. But I have so much respect for Sean Payton down in New Orleans and their style of football and what we've seen them do just here in the last few weeks. You know, they're they're a team, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. Drew Brees, oh, he's got to be in the dome to win playoff games. You know, Drew Brees is phenomenal, but they're a team that showed over the last two weeks they can win a number of different ways. They really can, and that offensive line is special. That defensive line has got three first-round picks on it. And Sean Payton, how tough his teams are, and his ability to game plan, I think, is, you know, a factor in that. And then the NFC is just so talented, too. And the other factor I throw into that with the, against the field is the Rams, you know, as you know, are still a very young football team and learning their way. So that's why I would say the field, but I still think the Rams are the favorite. If I gave you the Patriots or the field? Ooh, ooh, good question. I, I think... New England Patriots are the field. I would go with the field this year. I would. I don't think the Patriots are a slam dunk to come out of the AFC this year. I still think that if Kansas City somehow got New England to come into Kansas City in January, that is going to be extremely tough on the New England Patriots. You know, I look at the Houston Texans as a team that gets in the playoffs with that front. If they can stay healthy and Deshaun Watson and the way they're running the football, they could be dangerous. I think the Chargers are dangerous. Uh, so, you know, again, New England New England would be my pick as the best team in the AFC, but I, I think I would still take the field at a close one there. The best quarter- what about you? How about your opinion? I want to hear yours. Well, I picked the Saints and Chargers to play in the Super Bowl, so I Ooh, we were thinking alike. Yeah. I picked I picked the Saints and the Steelers. I had the Chargers going to the AFC championship game, but okay, I, I like it, Dan. You the man. Does Le'Veon Bell play for the Steelers this year? Yes. He will play for the Steelers. I, I do think that will happen. Um, I, you know, they're not going to rescind his franchise tag or do something like that. Why? So he can go down and sign with the Philadelphia Eagles and they can hear about it in their home state or he signs with the Baltimore Ravens and then gets in the playoffs. So that's certainly not happening, anything like that. Uh, I do think he'll play. I don't think you're going to see a good levy on Bill to the very end of the season, and he'll be in prime shape for the playoffs. Uh, but, you know, hey, James Conner is doing a great job yeah. there. Yeah. And I think Le'Veon Bell is probably, probably every bit as excited as James Conner that he's doing that. You know, one of the big things, Le'Veon Bell doesn't want to come back. Uh, it didn't want to come back because he didn't want to be beaten into the ground with, you know, 450 touches this year to where it hurts his future value. And he's being a businessman, but I think he'll be back there eventually. Talking to Chris Sims from uh, Pro Football Talk Live, co-host with Mike Florio, Bleacher Report NFL analyst. Uh, best Halloween costume. Do you ever go dressed as your dad for Halloween? No. I mean, gosh, I looked just like him. I dressed like him every day, I guess. I couldn't get away from him. I mean, people couldn't even remember my name, Dan. I mean, they just called me Phil or Little Phil. Even when I got to the NFL, you know, I'd get sacked uh, in an NFL game, and, you know, the referee would look at me and go, you okay, Phil? And I'd be like, <laughs> yep, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, okay. I didn't need to dress as Phil. Oh, okay, all right. Sorry, sensitive, still sensitive. Oh, no, I'm not sensitive at all. I'm not sensitive at all. Uh, the best quarterback <laughs> in New England this summer. Sunday will be oh you just want like well you know my thoughts on Aaron Rodgers I think he's the greatest of all time but I think that statistically when all said and done who's the best quarterback Sunday yeah I, I gotta go with Tom Brady there I okay. just because of you know the parts around him it's just too hard on Aaron Rodgers it's always having to do it all himself you know you've heard me say many a times that that offensive scheme in Green Bay is, you know, kindergarten math compared to what New England does is an advanced algebra. And But why uh, does Rodgers think... allow that to happen? He's He's well, got more power in there in that organization than Mike McCarthy does, doesn't he? I, I mean, uh, yes, probably. But, you know, again, Rodgers, this is the environment he grew up in. You know, I always say this to Mike Florio. He doesn't know what he doesn't know, right? He's watching New England film and going, Dan, how are these guys getting open? And what are they doing? And what is this stuff? Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, Green Bay is still running the same offense Brett Favre ran in 1997. And, you know, like you saw last week, Wade Phillips, I watched that film yesterday. I mean, it was like he knew the play that were coming sometimes there was nobody open and it's just rogers having to make magic too much yeah i just i know if the packers don't make the playoffs finish that yes, it's over it's over what's Gotta over go. mike mccarthy they, they, 
Yes, it has to. It either has to go or he has to bring in a new, fresh offensive mind that's outside of the realm of, you know, West Coast guys. You know, I know they brought Joe Philbin back, but, you know, whoop the freaking do. <laughs> Joe Philbin was there before. It's the same old crappy ideas. How would, uh, how would Ray Rodgers do in a New England system? Well, I'll, I'll, I mean – you know, of course, I think he would do phenomenal. And I, I know Brady, you know, I saw a, a quote from Ian O'Connor uh, a few weeks ago on Twitter that, you know, Brady told some defensive coordinator in the NFL that, oh, my gosh, if Aaron Rodgers played here in New England, he'd throw for 7,000 yards every year. You know, yeah, I mean, you know, again, I'm not trying to knock Tom Brady. People think I'm a Tom Brady hater, and I just think he's absolutely phenomenal, and he's in all ways. I really do. Uh, but Aaron Rodgers, to me, is like he's Michael Jordan. That is Michael Jordan. He's, he is in another world. I just go, it's the strongest arm ever, the quickest release ever. He's, <clears throat> excuse me, he's one of the best scramblers ever. Hey, he's the quickest of 40,000 yards and three touchdowns. He's the greatest gunslinger we've ever seen. And nobody protects the ball better interception to touchdown ratio than Aaron Rodgers. Second on that list is Brady at three to one, and Rodgers is at four to one. Yeah. That's just that's. I think that speaks to the incredible talent that Aaron Rodgers has. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Tom Brady or Boston, the Boston Mafia. Don't come after me. I still love Tom Brady. Yeah. What do you I'm think? I'm just trying to keep. What do you think Brady gives real. out in Halloween? Oh, like king size everything you know king size and probably like some new england paraphernalia with like an autograph or something like that an autograph picture but he doesn't give out he can't give out candy what oh you're right it's probably very healthy organic candy you're right does he give out steamed vegetables (laughs) yes yes it's like uh it's uh, organic granola you know, that's why he's probably got to give the autograph picture of himself. Yeah. The kids go there and they're like, man, that's Tom Brady, but this candy stinks. So you got to give a picture to go along with it with a signed autograph. Did your dad feel extra pressure to give out better candy growing up? Still still does, Dan. Still does. <laughs> dad is like, he's built this aura and, and he will have a line going up his driveway tonight. And my <laughs> sister is in charge and she spends thousands of dollars. <laughs> On the be- my dad gets great pride out of knowing he had the best <laughs> Halloween, you know, giver in, in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, thank you, bud. Uh, talk to you soon. The man. All right. All that's right. Uh, Chris Sims, Pro Football Talk Live co-host and uh, Bleacher Report NFL analyst, former NFL quarterback. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.